and welcome to the Awakening TV channel. I'm Josephine and today I'm interviewing um, a very long-term colleague of mine, Donna. Donna is an expert at the tarot and palmistry and a lot of other subjects as well, but I'm going to open the interview and we'll see where it takes us. I'd like to start a bit of about you. I'm a, mainly a tarot reader, that's yeah. what I mainly do, that's tarot how I and met palmistry. You, yeah. Yes, I love the tarot, I love the palm, but I also do a lot of work with past lives as well. Yeah. Uh, again, often using the cards uh, okay. to, to sort of delve into the past lives. And I do a lot of work with aura clearing and chakras and, and energy yeah. balancing really, because as the years have evolved and energies evolved, that's what I'm sort of evolving into really. Mm -hmm. But with the tarot, I started when I was only about six. Really? And my sister was 12. My sister Karen, she's an astrologer. Mm -hmm. She bought her first pack of tarot cards and I was her little guinea pig really, because she, you know, she, I was the only one she had to do them on. And uh, I think it must have all got in then really, because, and then my mum found them and said, oh, you know, you're a bit too young, you're not doing them. Um, so I think it sort of, all of the uh, connection began when I was that age. She was really. very young. Yes, it was, well, was she was sister? very young. She was 12. So I fancy a child. So going going to buy she, she's always been, it's very much okay. in her line, yeah. yeah. So, um, so she did that. So then... Gradually, it, when I was about 17 or 18, mm. uh, one of my friends bought a pack of cards and then we went for a couple of readings with different readers. Um, and we used to do the cards all together with a group of us. And I was the one that just started to keep getting, you know, keep saying, oh, I think this is going to happen. Or, and I didn't quite understand really how they worked or what they were. And then gradually, I, you know, I thought, no, I need to understand these. I need to know where they come from. Mm. I need to understand the history. and. Mm and everything and, and so that's what I did. Can, should we talk a bit about the history for this? Yes, well the TV channel. even that is changing now mm. but the tarot originally, the tarot we use today mm. um, were based on the Visconti tarot pack from you know Italy from yeah. around about the 13th yeah. century yeah. Um, but since then just recently a couple of years ago they have found other images in some new chambers they were opening in the pyramids that would, would suggest basically that the tarot would go back much further but there's no actual proof with that yet but yeah and then in the in the old days there was a game called Tarocini really okay. they used to yeah. play a game yeah. and they were only using the major what we would call now the major oh, I see. Um, and then they obviously recognised when that came out certain things were happening and and it sort of grew from there mm. and it sort of disappeared again for a little while and then it came back again very strongly in the 17th century um, in France again as a game. Mm -hmm. and, and the tarot, we mainly, most of the packs today are based on what's called the Rider Waite tarot yeah. pack. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Waite was, a, there was Waite and Alistair Crowley, they used yes. to be in this golden magic circle. Mm -hmm. And then they sort of went in different directions mm -hmm. and Waite made, went more on the lighter side. Yes. Um, and <laughs> Crowley went the other <laughs> side. Dark, but So yeah. the Waite pack are probably the most definitive pack of what most packs today. Really. Most people know those, don't they? Yes, yeah. most people yeah, yeah. know those. Yeah. But because everything's changing, and the tarot are, are evolving and changing, and I've yeah. noticed a lot recently with the energy shifts that we're having. Explain on how they're changing, Donna. Well, whereas before, the, if you had a reading, it would say, oh, you know, maybe you're going to move house and you're going to have yeah. this. Um, very much on a third dimensional, very linear timeline. Yeah. Basically. yeah worldly yes very worldly yeah. and what's happening really the last two or three years especially they're more going into people's emotions their soul growth it's, it's more there's no timelines really anymore um you can still have uh, you know sort of third dimensional yeah. reading but they're more but they're really going reading. much more about yeah, so which is obviously yeah. the potential within them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, a lot of people I've met, are, you know, the oh, tarot, they're horrified yes. of it. And where's that come over the century? Is it religion that's stepped in? I think in? very much religion, because you know, yeah. the tarot had a lot. I mean, there's two cards. I've changed one of them because I've made my own pack of cards yeah, you did. about five years you ago. You did, indeed. Um, and they're, they're, they're very good for the next phase really but mm. I called the death card because there's two cards that frighten people one was called the death card yes um so I've just named it rebirth okay because that's all it means yeah absolutely death is just the rebirth what's the other card. one the devil uh, the devil <laughs> and I'm just about to have uh, another set of the same cards but printed but I'm going to change the devil to desire 
because ultimately yeah. that's what it means. Yeah. It's it's not anything black magic. No, it's not no, evil. No, no. But it frightens people. It does. It yeah, really I think that's people. and they be, and when that's people are going to run them fear. down there. And, and over the centuries, obviously, there's been fear embedded in people. Yeah. So sometimes when people... It's a lot more open now um, yeah. because, yeah. you know, the way yeah. the media is yeah. and, and the yeah. social media has made it more acceptable. Yeah. But there is still an element of very... They're very misunderstood, the tarot. They I, are I amazing agree. tool. Absolutely yeah, amazing tool. I think tool. they're wonderful too. Um, they can help you. They mind your body, yeah. your spirit. You know, they can pick up a lot. It's interesting at the moment they pick up what's going to happen in the world yeah. um, and when there's big world events that shows up in readings at the beginning of people's readings really? it shows maybe you know have a card called the tower which is you know yes. can be a lot of yeah, shock yeah. and upset yeah, yeah. sometimes um, but that also gives me um, when there's all these big world events happening um, because they've been because they've been showing up in the cards before they happen, yeah. it sort of makes me think it's all part of a destiny. It's all part of a. And that's um, a huge vision of life, isn't it? For yes. each and every person that comes yes. in, that you know, maybe we do have some sort of destiny. Yes. That we've lost touch and belief that that's life could be that meaningful. Yes. So and that's really inspirational. It is inspirational, People and it takes realize, my fear. If yeah, you can see, yeah, it's all yeah, part. Yeah. So as well as doing an individual person, it's sort of picking up the collective as well. Oh, as, wonderful. Yes. And so And that helps people realise they're not on their own. Yes. There is no separation. Yes. I'm connected to it and I'm a part of it. Yeah. Lovely. That sounds really inspiring, Donna. Yes. It's good news for... Good news for the tarot. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah it is. Um, but uh, so that's how you came to it um, in yeah. the first place. Yeah. Um, I want. I've just got to say one thing. You, you have got the most amazing eyes, Donna. Oh, you know that, do. don't you? Mm -hmm. And I know in the past when I've ever come to you for a reading, it's always seemed to me that your eyes start to change colour. Yes, everybody. They says go that. very aquamarine. Yeah, a lot of people say that's that. That's quite unworldly. Change. That's yes. quite unworldly, isn't it? Yes, I think that's when I'm connecting with my guides. Yeah. I um, see your your eyes I change colour. Yeah, yeah, the eyes change. Yeah. Um, yeah. as I connect. I think when you often see people in the world or you know people, people who have certain talents often it shows through their eyes. That's yes. for me. Yes. You can tell when someone's got something going on in them yes. that is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, the eyes <laughs> do show it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because I, at the beginning when I worked with the cards, I didn't quite understand, uh, you know, guides and energies and what was helping me. But I knew when I did readings, if I got something really white, I'd go really cold and uh, I'd get feeling. So I thought, I need to explore this, I need to understand it. Um, and then I realised, you know, I met a man, he was a lovely man, he's passed over now, but he was a healer and he was explaining, he sort of got me more to understand, to connect, to meditate, which obviously enhanced my psychic side. Absolutely. Uh, because obviously the more you do that sort of thing, the more alpha brains you go the yeah. more you connect easier because mm. with anything like the tarot or any method of fortune telling if you take your mind out of the way and just let your intuition guide you it will guide you the right way you start to find i can remember years ago when i met you, you said i'm not a psychic i don't yeah i don't but you've changed on haven't you because yes. you've evolved yes i've evolved yes, yeah. uh, yes. i remember that yeah, and, you know you've always i've always seen i've always known you to be brilliant do you still use a very old deck of cards? They do come out from I time to time. time. <laughs> yes, they do still. I've still you, got them. I need to explain for the point of yeah. view that you've got a, a set of cards that are so anciently worn out and used that no one can see any of the symbols on them. No, but you know them. It. I know them. I can just make out, say, the foot of, say, the Knight of Cups. Yeah. And I remember yeah. it's that card. And, but they have literally, there is, the pictures are worn away. Yeah. Uh, but they point. still work so well. Yeah, yeah. But they don't come out so often anymore. They don't like the bad weather. They only come out. They, just, they sort of come out for guest appearances. They'll be in a museum one day. Don't yeah, but I never, ever get rid of them. I love no, those cards. No, no. I've had them over 30 years. I've grown up yeah. with them, really, yeah. Um, are you, is there more you've got to tell us about the tarot that we need to hear or shall we move on to the palmistry? Yeah, I think really, yeah. um, you know, the only thing to say about the tarot is not to fear it, yeah. you know, be yeah, open yeah. with it. Mm. Certainly don't live your life by it. If people are buying their cards and using their cards, they're just meant to be a guide. They, I think there's a misconception of that. 
um, when people have a reading, it's like a sat nav, it will show you the quickest way for your soul to go, but you do not have to take their advice at all. You know, no, no, you no. must always do what you feel is yeah. the right thing to yeah, do for yourself. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yes, to you know, to be open to the tarot because they've got a lot to share with Absolutely. us, really. Yeah. And then the palmistry, which is the other thing I love. I mean, I do runes as well. I do a lot of fortune telling methods because obviously mm. I do it as my main job. Yes. Um, and some people's energies respond better to different tools. Yeah. But the palm is the other thing, you know, that is my passion that yes. I really love and yeah. I teach and I enjoy doing it yeah. as well. So um, let's understand yeah, we could move on to that. I, I, I'm bit. interested in that, and I'll, then I'll talk about all the workshops you do. But yes. Yeah, the palms. They the don't, palm is, they don't is a lie. lie. They no, don't they lie. Don't lie. <laughs> They're like a moving map of our life. They change all the time, mm. and that's sort of one of the biggest misconceptions. In the old days, they used to think you were just born with your lines, which you may have been a hundred years ago. Maybe they didn't but we're evolving, aren't we? We've evolved, we're all so changing. the hands have evolved yes, yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, but they're like a moving map of your life. So if you're about to have some big changes, yeah. it will show up in your hands, um, it shows the health, it shows uh, the emotions, um, and they change nearly daily really you could take a photograph from one week to the next you'd see new lines appear mm. but they are absolutely amazing the palm is and there's new lines appeared on them recently again as we're evolving isn't it wonderful um, yes yeah, so we change new in lines eternally, eternally and emotionally and our hands, our hands change but that's the magic of the body and that's the magic yes. of our connection to the universe yes it yes, is wonderful. it's amazing yeah. and i mean in the old days originally palmistry was actually used by doctors was it? Um, that's where it, it, it started a lot. God, um, I thought they could read well. They, well <laughs> and they used to, a lot of what they said in those days is now really applicable now. You is know, it? warnings about things like putting food in tins and uh, people will have all these weird illnesses and, and things like that. And then gradually, obviously, because uh, fortune tellers, gypsies, uh, mm. wise women started using it. The, the medical side moved away from it okay. um, probably a couple of hundred years ago, really. Okay. But even now, they still look at your hands, don't they? When a baby's born, they look at the palm to see if it's got the, the simian line. I didn't know that, I'm learning down. something every day, really. Um, How good? Um, I'm really pleased to hear yes, this. Yes. Because me too. Uh, <laughs> like blood disorders, often they go, well, if you've not got false nails, they'll check your nails and they'll check, oh, you know. Yes. So they're still going to the the hands yeah. um, without realising what they're doing. So our body is a, our body it's is, a mirror. It is, it is a mirror of our but physical it's even and deeper emotional. And through to our connection to Yes, you. and our spiritual yeah. Wonderful, side. Yeah, it is, it is amazing. Great. So the palm is, I think every parent should learn the palm because yeah. I think if you can understand certain markings and lines on your children's you hands, know how to work with you your would know child. how to work with them the best way. You're not trying to, you know, they're very creatively gifted. How wonderful. So you'd bring your newborn and you'd... Yes, and yeah. watch it, you know, just guide yeah. it a little bit. And if, say, a child's being bullied or something, or an adult, um, you know, the, this line here goes much smaller. On the little finger, those two, that middle line sh shrinks or it gets cuts or gets so a part of them cows and so that and so that you I can wonder. see that you can watch that and that's you can wonderful watch confidence so we yes. don't force our you're going to grow up like this i want yes. you to be yes this. we don't you force them into no. a linear box no, we wonderful. we allow them to be who they are that's the first time um, i've heard about that Don't so really i think like that. that would be good yeah. if good parents could learn the palm just Great. just for the basics yeah. just to help Great. their children that's the, really um, wonderful you know, and their self, obviously. Yeah, indeed. To see where their own weaknesses are and try yeah. and work on it. Yeah, okay. I'd quite like to talk about, you we've, You talked about the aura work you do. Yes. Um, and, and how you came to that, because you've had health problems yourself, yes. Donna, I know, over the years. Yeah. And um, I think you're remarkable because you've dealt with it yes. so well. But you've yeah. grown, it's a bit like growth through adversity, isn't it? It is, definitely. And obviously, because... I have got a condition um, and it's now called smouldering myeloma because it's not doing anything but on paper it is like a, a cancer it's yeah. like a myeloma cancer yes. um, but I was very young when it first appeared I was uh, sort of in my late 20s or early 30s and normally you're quite old when that appears so they was, they couldn't work it out for a while what it was um, and then I got very very poorly and um, with chicken box and nearly died because obviously you can't fight your immune system 
So I thought, well, I need to look at this. I need to work out what's going on with this. And then when I got the diagnosis, I thought, you know, I couldn't quite understand why it was there. So I tried uh, many things that like you do, the diets and the this and the that. Um, and then I thought, no, this is, I, I meditated um, and had a little chat with my illness. And it sort of said, I haven't come to kill you, I've come to make you live, sort of thing. Mm. So, um, and then I started realising that each cell is programmed from our chakras and our chakra in our energy field we have chakras yeah and each chakra is programmed at certain ages through our yeah. our lifetime yeah. um but also i worked out uh, we inherited we've inherited yeah. a lot of things yeah. so i thought well this illness won't go um i'm going to work on the inherited side of it so literally all i i do and i did um and i still do it now um every month i do a release and i tap my thymus because the yes. thymus opens the higher yeah. heart yeah. but it also affects your immune system yeah, yeah. so i tap my thymus i at the time when i first was trying to get rid of my illness i said you know i willingly release any you know inherited cell memories any past life memories mm -hmm. any trauma from this life Anything that I've had that's created this problem uh, because I don't really want it anymore. And I blew bubbles because in my mind I could see the illness was leaving, I, the bubbles were like the illness leaving my, my mind. Did you do all this intuitively? I just did it intuitively. Um, but that's, um, uh, that's a lesson for everybody, isn't yes, it? Yes, just to trust your the instincts. The power of yourself to That's move it, to through. just trust what, and not to be in fear because the illness suddenly went from being quite quite big and I mean I did have to have radiotherapy on my tumour in my chest because it was mm. I remember too big. when you had terrible chest trouble. That's it. it. So I had to do that. But I didn't have the chemo, I didn't have the bone marrow transplant. I thought I've got to just trust myself. And everyone's different. Some people need to have their I would oh, never absolutely. advise anyone not no, to no, have no. whatever they But you feel had the self belief for and the courage. But then I spent a long time going into the chakras and I take a bit of like the Western belief of the chakras and a lot of the Indian belief of the chakras and that they're programmed at certain ages yeah. so you have to reprogram you know if, for yeah. example at the age of five you know so we had a lot of upheaval then you're going to keep creating that in your base chakra yeah. all the time yeah, and bringing yeah. this poverty consciousness yeah, and yeah. things so so that's what i do so i enjoy um you, you do know, workshops on that yes, don't you i do a lot to do with teaching it and and helping people clear through the layers of their aura um, because are always in many layers yeah. and if you say is if you imagine it's like a glass of water mm. and every time we've gone through stress or worry or got the mm. bills or the kids are a nightmare it's like bits of sand going in that glass of water and in the end it's like so murky we're just creating what what we send out in our energy field is what we create yeah. pull back into and our life into so our we're body. just creating that loop so by clearing as much as you can um, from, you know, your energy field, mm -hmm. then you're keeping your aura as high as it can be, as much energy as it can be, which will help your physical body. Even though on paper, I've still got all my blood tests on paper, there's still something wrong with my blood on paper. Um, but nothing else happens of the illness. So, you know, on paper, my blood cells are still misshapen. Yeah. I've worked out that's obviously because I'm always in and out of another dimension where mm -hmm. I'm working. So, mm -hmm. you know, I never give it any power or anything. But I feel well and I have lots of energy because I keep my aura strong and I keep my chakras strong. So therefore, I feel strong even if my physical body has got this like malfunction. Yeah. As long as I feel well, um, that's I the main well. thing. Yeah, that's so, wonderful, and that's I do that wonderful. through the aura, really. That's wonderful, mm. Donna. So what are the and um, so that's big. I mean, that's so important for Jay. There's so much yes illness, and and it's so easy to surrender for to illness. Yes, and uh, you know something. You know it's there are some very negative messages out there in the world. Yes. So once you you've got that, you're, yes. you're done for sort of. Yes. And yeah, I feel I mean, that I, very strongly. And I greatly know that you can. I watch my own husband condemned to yes. death. Yeah, uh, but the, his you could say his spirit and his will mm. to not go pulled him through, and yeah. he had a miraculous. And I, I'm always amazed, but it shows something to do with the human spirit, isn't it? And self belief. Yes. Um, and that's something maybe we need. Needs to be developed more in the young people. I feel so, so. so that goes back to your palmistry and looking yes. at the children and seeing, you know, we've 
we all probably do come in with a call. <laughs> I, I believe and, that. I believe we're born with a destiny. <laughs> yeah. I think we. Yeah. I think our soul chooses to come to earth. Is yeah. what I believe. Yeah. And we're born with like a destiny purpose. Yes. How we get there, we use our free will to mm. to get there. So say for example, you were traveling to London, it's up to you if you're gonna travel at a mad pace and go through all the speed cameras yeah. and call yourself all drama, <laughs> or whether you're gonna sedate you sit in the traffic jam and just think, oh well I'm here. So we but you'll ultimately get to London at the end of the day. Mm. So your destiny will keep trying to get you to to mm -hmm. where you are you'll get a lot of synchronicity normally you can tell when something is part of your destiny because there is a lot of synchronicity mm -hmm. and, and things fall into place mm -hmm. or um you know say so you you miss the train or something you're not meant to go to that certain place at that time mm -hmm. and obviously we have to learn perseverance and willpower and things mm -hmm. so if someone's blocked a couple of times you can persevere but if it's still not flowing then try to just surrender for a minute and think okay this is being stopped for a reason because something else is going to come in in a minute and I need to just wait to see what the next part of the picture is. Um, so I believe our destiny, and sometimes health, our soul can learn through health. Yeah. In my astrological chart, when I was only 16, my sister did my chart for me, my astrologist sister, yeah. and it said my uh, sort of death and rebirth of my soul, you know, my activation of my soul path was going to come in through my health. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying at the time, well, I'm not, you know, um, but even even when I first learnt the tarot, because this illness when it first came uh, affected my tissues, it was connective tissues were breaking down a bit and they thought I had lupus originally, which obviously I didn't, um, so luckily, thankfully, um, but it gave me time to rest for a couple of months, which then gave me time to really read all about the history of the cards and understand each card and things so even that started through mm -hmm. really having the time through health so I did grow a lot through being not well mm -hmm. um, and I believe when our time is to go it is that's I believe our time is destined when it's time to go it's mm -hmm. time to go home um, but the quality of how you live your life I feel can be very affected by by our mindset definitely absolutely definitely and that's I think that's a wonderful message I think mm -hmm. it gives hope to people who probably feel powerless and that they've, yes. they've only got to investigate and yes it's and just doing one bit at a time yeah. if you've had and years worth of pain and stress and I know struggle it's hard. It's it really is hard, hard to be positive but people like that need a little bit of spark of inspiration from somebody that yes. hasn't done it and I has done it and I need to learn from them yes and you talked about a lot about having time yes slowing down meditation meditation is very important um and i mean we're all really busy and it's mm. not always easy to take an hour out of your day or something i often meditate at night when i'm going to sleep which i know people say you shouldn't meditate before you sleep for some reason but i do and it works for me but even if you can't have time to meditate if you just have time to change your breathing um, you know, if you breathe and exhale and breathe and exhale two or three times mm. um, and just really centre yourself. And at the moment, because the Earth's changing quite rapidly now, the yes. magnetic energy of the yeah. planet's changed yeah. um, and our vibration is higher. So Earth is higher vibration, the humans are higher vibration. And we've got this old sort of like third dimensional uh, yeah. you know, density, yeah, almost yeah. the old pain, the old fear and everything still weighing us down a little bit. Mm. And it's all about bringing in as much light as you can into yourself, into your energy field. So if you can sort of maintain holding the lighter vibration, you can adapt because I mean, otherwise you're feeling tired, you're feeling exhausted, people are feeling very confused, their memories are a little bit like, yes. you know, not quite, <laughs> you know, there is the old, yeah. as we've got these new sort of new ones opening in the yeah, brain, yeah, yeah. Um, and the old is falling away, the old things that were so important to us before, all of that structure is broken down now, um, so we are having to live in the moment because mm. nobody knows what's going to happen next there's no security in any mm. particular yeah. aspect yeah. anymore um, so it's all very much about getting your you know being more in touch with the soul with and your the well-being your own connection your own to the connection universe. to the universe and of course and we need to say that the, you know astrologically that all those who are really into astrology have been saying that this is what is happening yes. as well yes. you know it was the cosmos was reflecting it's it's ready to change it is it um, is i mean changes are happening um well we can see it yes we you, can if you're really bogged down in the material world you can see it and, and maybe that's enough to say 
maybe I better look into stuff. And yes. this lovely thing that we go home as well. Yes. Is a, is a beautiful concept. So it there's is. so much death surrounding, fear surrounding death. There, there is a lot of fear, yes. Yeah. There is a lot of fear. And it, it is, I mean, obviously, again, it goes back to having a better quality of life when we're living. Yeah. But there is so much almost irrational fear about it, really, because yeah. obviously at the end of the day, that is one inevitable thing, you yeah. know, that... So yeah. it is just trying not to... It's just moving up. It's like moving upstairs, really. Yes. It's just... But you've, you've got that perception now. Yes. That's lovely. And I like the way you say it, because the only time I have to... Is when I go just go to sleep. Yes. That's when I reach out. And yes. I say, I need some help here. Yeah. And the ability maybe to move away from our bodies and our conscious mind at night and yes. come back with a much more, res you know, refreshed perspective. You can. And you can almost program your dreams as well. If yeah. you can't sort of meditate, yeah. even colouring will still your mind. I mean, the worst thing to do when you lie in bed is to analyse and worry about things. Yeah. Because ultimately, you can't do anything about anything at two o'clock in the morning or whatever. <laughs> you know, you can't actually phone yeah. the bank or phone this no, or whatever. No, no, no. So it's almost like if you can't cope with things, to say to whoever you pray to, um, yeah. if you don't particularly believe in anything, even just release it just to the universe. Yeah, but yeah. you know, just to sort of say, well, I I can't deal with this right now. You know, please give me the strength or the yeah. answers. And then as you sleep, you you know, your higher self could come in and give you... You can wake up in the morning and you feel much more, you know, sure with it. Yeah. And if you can't do that, you can put crystals. You know, amethyst is a very good crystal. Yeah. Um, you can almost program it to help you program your dreams. Mm. Um, if you're not sleeping well, if you put amethyst under your pillow, that will help. Mm. Uh, because crystals will work with our energy field. They have their own aura. Mm. Um, and so crystals are very good. Yeah. I've also noticed literally putting symbols in your aura. If you can't, if you haven't got the strength to do your meditation yeah. or whatever, yeah. you can almost write on it. I mean, people who do Reiki uh, healing put yeah. the symbols in. Yes, um, they do. I believe any. Yeah. I mean, I have done Reiki healing, but I don't actually heal that no, way. No. Um, but but you can put symbols in your aura, or you can program the vibration of the symbol like I use the flower of life symbol for yeah. everything my water my food often but when I was poorly we're very poorly I used it for everything I used everything I had was charged up on the flower life symbol because it will heal it sort of it will take you back to the core and it heals every cell and um, it's like Masaru Moto's work, you know, if yes, you throw down the water. Yeah. Um, so by putting symbols in your aura, so if you can't sleep and you're, you know, all over the place, literally just doing like either a lemnis gate symbol, which is a figure of eight on its side, an infinity, it helps you just flow in the infinite light. The power of, of the, the symbolism universe, of yes. the universe. And by That's putting wonderful. it in your aura, it's almost like you're putting it in as a plasma. It's like a band-aid or whatever until your aura is strong enough to do it on its own. It's about, it feels like you're remembering who we once knew well, we, we were. were. Yeah, yeah, exactly, it is. I, it's just, I find it quite emotional. It's just nice to hear someone yeah. speak like that. It's really yes. um, inspirational to people if they can... Uh, Start to investigate it. Yes. And to get, get some hope back. That's what it is, it's hope. And um, that flame that's yes. got, gone out. But it's not exactly. ever ignited. No. We no. never lose connection. No, we never lose because connection. Because we go home and, and we're never abandoned. Exactly. And, and even it. now, I mean, what's happened a couple of years ago, the light body in us opened yeah. up something called the, what they call the light body. Basically, like you say, our flame is always in us. Our soul, little flame, is always in us. Mm. And but it's like this room. We've got the lights on in this room. If we turn the lights off, the lights are still there, but we yeah. haven't switched them on. So we're in the dark and we're a bit confused and we can't quite see clearly. Mm. So by just bringing in that light to the core of you, just behind your belly button, really about two inches behind, is mm. like the core point to connect with. If you just bring in that light and imagine that little ball of light getting brighter and brighter and brighter, it's like all of a sudden you're putting your light body through every single... Yeah. You know, you're flooding yourself with your own your own light. And that is such an empowering, uh, you know, such an empowering thing to do. Um, and if you are feeling very lost and depressed, you know, it costs no money to just tap your thymus and breathe. It takes two seconds of your day. Um, you know, there's... I mean, healing is very good. Um, anything... You, it was whatever works for you, but Absolutely. I just feel, you know, it is to try. But yeah. if you can keep your light body connected, then you are not 
thinking so much and if you're not thinking you're more so in much, your body you're, you're more it. in the moment you're more in yes. yourself you're more tuning back into the real you yes and I then you work out what's important and what isn't important i think you give it. a wonderful message oh. and it's not as though it's come out of books this has come through yes personal. through my you you, you ca- obviously came in with a call yes um your illness took you into that call. yes and yeah. you you use the challenge of that to remember re- regain your knowledge yes and then you give it out to others a beautiful story you're a lovely person donna oh and i feel quite tearful oh. <laughs> so oh. i'm going to end here right thank you <laughs> thank you for coming donna That's i knew i should have asked you years ago oh. and then one day i thought i should ask donna to come oh. why didn't i ask donna so thank lovely you. and we will um put up on the um tv channel all the details of you. You've yeah. got that beautiful shop. Yes, I've yeah. got a lovely shop a lovely in Pure shop. Well in Christchurch. Yeah. Um, I do meditation CDs uh, yes. as people want yeah. guided meditations. Uh, my tarot cards yeah. that I've made, which are I have lots of good uh, messages from people saying how well they work. Yeah. So I'm really, really pleased with them. Well, I didn't just do it on my own, actually. I must just mention Andy, a man called Andy Saunders yeah. drew them Did for the me. And he put it. quite a lot of his own energy yeah. into them yeah. as well. Lovely. So it was like a, a joint yeah. effort, yeah. really. Yeah. Well, great. Well, well, we'll make sure all that's available thank so, you. Be, so people can come to you. But thank you, Donna. Thank it's you. It's a real pleasure to meet you. you. And, uh, you know, it's been, uh, it's just really lovely to hear that. Thank and you. I hope it gives inspiration to all the viewers. Okay, so I'm going to say goodbye for now. We'll be back soon. We've got some other people we're going to interview soon, hopefully, who are equally inspirational. Because I think that's going to be the theme for the next few interviews, to find people who inspire us in these challenging times. So bye for now.